thanks for dropping in. Last year, I designed a series of print-in-place twisty puzzle boxes. This print-in-place design means that the puzzles are ready to be solved as soon as they come off the printer bed. No assembly required, and no solution spoilers. In this video, I'm going to take the design further, with a more challenging variant in multiple new cases. I'll also demonstrate how you can use Prusa Slicer to combine this puzzle design with existing 3D models. No modeling software required. Unlike last time, this video will reveal how the puzzle works. So if you don't want the solution to be spoiled, download, print, and solve the puzzle yourself before watching the rest of the video. Links to download these models are in the video description. Okay, that should be sufficient warning. Let's start with a quick run through of how the puzzle actually works. The puzzle contains a small maze. Vertical movement through the maze is controlled by rotating this main dial. Lateral movement is controlled by rotating the entire core. Once the maze is solved, the box will open. I say maze, but the path the core takes is extremely simple. There's only a single dead end, which terminates immediately. That takes us to our first update, a more challenging version of the puzzle. This difficult variation turns that winding path into a true maze. It has more steps and more dead ends. Even if the puzzle solver makes it to the end of the maze, they'll eventually reach a spot where they can no longer advance. Both vertical and horizontal movement appears to be blocked. At this point, and only this point, the entire core can be pressed into the puzzle, twisted, and then pulled out. It's a simple trick, but it's one you wouldn't anticipate if you were familiar with the original design. Next up is several new case designs, although new isn't completely accurate. This print-in-place barrel puzzle reuses a model I created for the Barrel Cooper's puzzle box. I just love how this design looks and how easy it is to print. These hoops are printed separately and just snap on. The barrel also comes with an optional glue-on Donkey Kong logo, so you can show off your Nintendo appreciation. The next case is a Super Mario mushroom. Yes, Nintendo is a running theme this week. The base of the mushroom can be printed either fully sealed or with an open top. The sealed option is best if you want to avoid glue or if you like the idea of switching out the top's color from time to time. The open option lets you drop in a prize without solving the puzzle. It also has slightly more storage space. If you do choose the open option, make sure you glue on the top really well. I imagine a frustrated puzzle solver might try to just rip it off. Both the barrel and the mushroom come in easy and difficult variants. So of course, I had to print two more mushrooms to cover all the difficult variants. The final new case doesn't exist yet. I'm going to use Prusa Slicer to turn this solid model of a brick block into a new print-in-place puzzle. So let's jump over to the computer and get started. Okay, here we are in Prusa Slicer. On the left, you see a preview of my printer bed, and on the right are my printing profiles, space for a list of models, and a few other settings. My view is set to expert, so your screen might not look the same. At the top of the sidebar, you can toggle between simple, advanced, and expert views using the green, yellow, and red buttons. Let's bring in the model we're going to turn into a puzzle. Now we want to punch a puzzle-shaped hole into it. To do that, let's right-click on the brick block, select Add Negative Volume, and then select Load. Here we can select a negative volume template. This reveals a ghost image of the hole we're going to punch. The hole is nowhere near where we want it to be, so I'll use the position controls in the sidebar to center it with the main model. That's zero for the x-axis and zero for the y-axis. To make sure the hole rests on the printer bed, I'll press this little drop to bed option. Finally, let's slice the model and see how it looks. That's pretty good. There's plenty of room around the sides and the hole doesn't poke out through the top of the model, but we could expand the storage area a bit. To do that, I'll add a second negative volume, a box. 
then it's just a matter of resizing and positioning it until we get a good result. There we go. If you plan to share this modified model, just save it as a 3MF file. Keep in mind that while most modern slicers do support 3MF files, not all of them will know what to do with this negative volume data. So anyone who wants to print your design will probably need to open it in Prusa Slicer. With that warning aside, let's print it. And there we are, another print in place puzzle done. I'll post this along with the others with both easy and difficult maze configurations. This collection has gotten kind of crazy, so I think that'll be the end of this particular print in place puzzle design, but I hope it inspires a lot of great custom remixes. So until the next video, Happy printing, and thanks for stopping by. Okay, so it's not very fair that I made this more difficult puzzle, and then I didn't solve it in the video. So, since you stuck around, let's see if I can solve it. And here we're at the crucial point. And there we go.